we're getting average around $85 Canadian. And our op cost has been, every year we've been reducing. It was, it was like I said, it was $60 a barrel when we took 60 plus and we got it down to 38. Now we're getting down to 33. And these are additional wells that's contributing to the fixed costs. So it's even lowering the uh, cost. So our net back is anywhere 40, 50 dollars. The Financial Survival Network. Now more than ever. The Financial Survival Network. And welcome. This is Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Kerry Lutz. And hey, gotten a lot of requests from you out there. Please, please, please give us an update on Prospera Energy. Well, we're going to do better than that. We're going to talk to the CEO, Samuel David. We're going to give you an update on the drill program, the success to date, five for five wells, uh, increased production. It's really a story of a turnaround that's coming to fruition with increased production and uh, higher profits right around the corner. Sam, it's great to see you again. Hey, so we're doing the uh, horizontal wells. You've drilled five of them. You're five for five. What are the results tangibly? Uh, what can we look forward to in terms of increased production? Thank you for reaching out for an update. And uh, Prospera is happy to convey uh, what we have encountered. As you mentioned, we have uh, drilled five horizontals and uh, uh, infill drilling um, based on uh, geological well, uh, delineation, well control, um, and seismic delineation. Uh, therefore, the, the chance of success of geological uh, finding the reservoir is high, you know. And the only um, uh, risk is mechanical because this is infill low risk drilling. And on that, we tweaked it by drilling a couple of pilot wells prior to embarking on this development program that we have uh, drilled five wells. Uh, so, as for all this tweaking, these wells encountered pay, structure, and oil, as we expected. And um, and uh, uh, also, we came in under budget uh, by about 15%. And I think we can even uh, tweak that a little bit more as we extend the drilling. I'm going to share a screen and show you the results that we have in the first few months uh, of production. So here's the type curve that we used before embarking on the development program uh, for economics. And here are the results that we have encountered, the production. Uh, initial IPs in the first two months, we have two months of steady production. As a matter of fact, it was going up. And also, there's a lot of room for optimization on these wells because they're being held back. There's still 25 joints of fluid. And the pump is just operating at a very low efficiency because we don't want to exert higher high drawdown on the reservoir uh, on the heavy oil. With the heavier oil, with the higher viscosity, it is important that you do not exert high drawdown on the reservoir. If you do that, it's going to finger the water through the oil and you'll be getting more water than the oil. As you can see, we're drawing these down at a very, very low efficiency, and yet we're getting some really good rates exceeding our time curve expectations. Right. So you're producing more oil than expected. But obviously, from what you're saying, Sam, this is a very delicate operation. You don't just <clears throat> march in there and start drilling wells without knowing what you're doing. And th this reservoir is very porous and permeable. There's a lot of well control that we have. So we have placed the wells, the, the technical team and the drilling team, they have worked together very well on placing the well where we set out to do, and it has encountered pay, and it is delivering at initial stages exceeding our expectations. Uh, originally, the plan called for uh, 10 wells to be drilled, and now you're upping that. Right. Let me show you. Uh, because of the results we have encountered and the collaboration that we have with our services that we were working with, especially Lasso uh, Drilling Company, we have um, decided to extend our drilling program and continue drilling it because we have a large inventory of uh, horizontals to drill. And uh, this whole field is being transformed. Let me show you, let me show you that. I think a picture says thousand words. Okay, this is one of the pools 
that uh, we're drilling. And uh, when you're drilling these wells, these horizontals, we have to shut in a lot of the adjacent production uh, so that we don't encounter uh, drilling issues by the way of loss of mud. Because if there's another well that's drying, uh, we're drilling here and we're pumping mud, it will fly over to, especially in this primitive forest, primitive reservoir. Most of the field is shut in prior to two, two or three weeks prior to we start drilling. Uh, so the current production is all there. We're obtaining a results, as, as I showed you in the last five wells that we drilled, added uh, an average 100 barrels a day each well at initial stages. We expect a decline later on, but it is exceeding our expectations right now. So based on this, we're commencing drilling on these wells. Actually, we're going to commence drilling on this location. And these wells, strategically, we picked it out to set up other horizontals going further. So then we have additional horizontals. And you can see the whole reservoir is spaced and strategically placed to optimize recovery, all recovery, uh, not just a certain spot. And with horizontals, you're reaching out and accessing additional pay as opposed to just one vertical well like this. It only recovers around here. With these uh, horizontals, we're accessing the entire reservoir. It'll deliver nice steady volumes over time. And, and if you notice, there's a color scheme in here. The red is the ones we're going to drill right now. And then we're going to follow up with other wells. The blue ones are also we're going to drill. The blue ones are going to be converted to injectors. You know, we'll start out as a producer and it'll be converted to injector. So within the next year, when the decline starts to come down, we have already started in the reservoir management of providing energy and support and that'll give us a better sweep efficiency and keep sweeping that oil to the producer and add lower the decline. That means the company will have steady stream of production translated to cash flow. And you got to feel good about this because this field and what you're doing now is the reason you took on the whole mess in the first place, right? Exactly. Not only when we drill all of these, we're abandoning a lot of these vertical wells that is there. So it, we're reducing the environmental footprint and the associated uh, surface lease costs, liability in the books, or retirement obligation. It also lowers the, the liability and uh, it, it leads to a robust balance sheet. Right. So basically, it's a cleanup on aisle seven here. You're taking uh, what was really not positive uh, environment there. You're cleaning it up, helping the environment, and you're producing uh, energy barrels of oil, which will uh, directly feed the bottom line. And the plan to, to maintain a low decline or reduce the decline so we have a steady stream of production. Right. So these wells are probably going to outlast you and me. Reserve life of index of these uh, reservoirs is around 40 years. Uh, which is, like I say, if I make it to 40, uh, well, I don't want to think about that. You know what I'm saying. I did. You and I have it countered a few times, almost a few times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically, you've been vindicated. Your plan, your whole reason for doing this, you've proven it. I think it's going in the direction as we anticipated. Uh, the team, you know, the, what we have encountered is what we anticipated. And I think your operation technique and drilling technique is bang on, uh, as you can see by the results. Right. Okay, so now we go to the vertical wells at Brooks. Uh, status update there? Certainly. Uh, as we speak, finally, we got some of the permits and licenses and, uh, you know, pipeline, pipeline license and well license. And uh, we're commencing construction next week uh, to set up for drilling. We already have the drilling rig. We're still anticipating to meet all our, uh, um, uh, our targets for the year ahead. So... You had hit two wells last year and when you were drilling, but basically they were just sitting there because you couldn't hook them in with the pipeline. So you're going to be able to do that now? Correct. Those are the pipeline permits that we have obtained. And uh, and we also have obtained some leases to drill. And um, these are new new lease and new pipeline. So it, need, you know, it has to go through the whole process. Uh, and the process have become very rigorous with all the environmental uh, consideration that is going on. Uh, it's been about a five-month uh, 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 process that we've been encountering. And uh, finally, we got some of them, and the others are coming on the way. So the, the first two wells, 
you know, that's what uh, really excited us. The first well uh, 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 tested at 100 barrels a day flowing, light oil. The other one tested at 300 barrels a day, light oil. I mean, that's the initial flush production will come down, but it is a lot higher than what we anticipated. And we have a fair way to run in this area that we, we got 3D seismic. We have just like what I showed you in the other screen on that reservoir, we have delineated it with well control geology and seismic. And we have identified over 20 locations. We got to do, we do our best to, to drill our eight eight wells or six, six to eight wells and tie, including these two tie-in wells by the year end. That's excellent news. And this is medium, uh, medium, medium, yeah, medium light oil, medium light. So yeah. that's the equivalent of like, uh, 24 ABI yeah. kind of, uh, no, it's still some discount. It's about 24 ABI. Oh, okay. So pretty close. Yeah. yeah. Closer. So, all right. So production. Uh, you're foreseeing or forecasting uh, in the near future 1,500, and then it's going to go up 1,500 barrels per day equivalent, and it's going to go up from there. Right. Our year-end target was 1,800, and we still uh, anticipate to hit that. Right. And the first five wells, like you said, are producing and drills on site, right? Yes. We, uh, we drilled them, completed them, tied them in fairly quickly. And uh, these these additional program that uh, these wells that are commencing as we speak right now, uh, you know, there's some lease contracted, and uh, we're just moving on. The rig is just moving on, and we're gonna commence production next week, and uh, we're gonna do exactly what we just did. It's all gonna be uh, what do they say, cookie cutter? Same same process for each well because they're on the existing lease. There's already pipeline. We tie it in, and uh, carry on. Yeah. So so. The opportunities there. Hey, I should mention that I'm a shareholder, pretty uh, significant shareholder from my perspective, from my finances. And, uh, you know, I'm, hey, I've been uh, waiting with bated breath for this interview, Sam, because, you know, the news is good. And obviously the market will do what the market does. But at some point, when they, it's a story of uh, consistently increasing production from this point forward. Barring weather conditions, and as you mentioned, market condition, you know, the uh, the, uh, the reserves are there, and we, we're executing them, and we're going to continue doing that as barring from these conditions. And like you said, you're running 15% under budget, which is like unheard of in the uh, oil patch. Usually, you're running 15 to 25% above budget. I, I'm very happy to... Uh, to convey that, and uh, that it's a, it's it's a credit to to the, all the service providers, the technical team. Uh, uh, you know, if working efficiently and effectively, right, important, and that uh, that means that you're out in the field watching this, making sure that the money isn't uh, flowing someplace else than other otherwise into the wellhead, right? You know, Western Canadians are happy to have this kind of development happening. And people are getting back to work, and uh, and overall, it's good for a family and and the society. Great. Hey, what's the uh, net back situation at this point? Uh, net back of uh, what we're getting for our, our, our oil? Yeah, we're getting average around eighty five dollars Canadian. I always talk. I know you guys are uh, Canadian, and our, our and our op cost has been. Every year we've been reducing. It was it was like I said, it was sixty dollars a barrel when we took sixty plus, and we got it down to thirty eight. Now we're getting down to thirty three, and these are additional wells that's contributing to the fixed costs. So it's even lowering the uh, cost. So our net back is anywhere forty fifty dollars, which is remarkable. And obviously, the less you spend uh, developing these wells, then the higher the net back is going to be down the road. Of course. I, and also, we're retiring another 36 vertical locations. Uh, you know, that reduces our liability. And next summer, we got a huge reclamation program uh, to turn uh, all of this back to farming lands, uh, reducing our environmental footprint. That'll also reduce tremendous amount of, uh, bo to the bottom line to the OPEX. Do you anticipate picking up the pace of drilling? uh even more as the cash flow starts to mount up 
Well, sometimes you don't want to outrun the resources you have at hand. Uh, and also, you have to look at the reservoir management as well. I, there's a lot of uh, pre-planning goes in here in order to do this. When you rush these things, that's when you encounter additional capital costs because you went a little too fast. Uh, I, we're maintaining a good pace. And you also have to let the reservoir uh, you know, show us what it can do as well. And there's also reservoir management. Perhaps we can go a little faster, but then, like I said, you need to hire more people, more teams, you know, all of that complicated. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, the process, if the process is good, perhaps it can function. But if you the process is, it always starts breaking down and the functionality and the results starts deteriorating. Interesting developments all on the positive side, which is great. I mean, how many companies out there can point to revenues going higher and costs going lower? That in itself is a very rare situation in this day and age with inflation and the rapidly <clears throat> increasing prices on so many of the things that we need every day. So it's great to see costs uh, cost going down. And I guess we're going to have a lot more to talk about uh, in the uh, not too distant future. So you want to go over to prosperaenergy.com, sign up for notifications so you'll know right away for every barrel of production that uh, that gets uh, <laughs> that gets added which uh, which is really what the story is about and ticker symbols in Canada it's PEI in the US it's GXRFF hey questions comments uh, you can always send me an email kl at kerrylutz.com Sam thanks for taking time out from the field probably you're happy I know it's cold there now but I know that uh, your heart is always in the field that's where the action is. The Financial Survival Network.